Hello. You might wonder why I'm sitting here in this poorly lit room in front of my computer. I was reading about something called infrasound, which is low frequency sounds below what the human ear can hear. But what I was reading about was some research conducted in 1998 by Vic Tandy. He's an experimental part-time lecturer at the School of International Studies and Law at Coventry University. Dr. Tony Lawrence is a member of the psychology department. And he wrote a paper called Ghosts in the Machine. Very interesting reading. He was talking about infrasound and its relation to paranormal experience, ghost sightings. I'm going to read you a little bit of this. A person named Tandy was working late in the haunted Warwick laboratory when he saw a gray thing coming for him. I felt the hairs rise on the back of my neck, he said. It seemed to be between me and the door, so the only thing I could do was to turn and face it. But the thing disappeared. However, it reappeared in a different form the next day. What they discovered, being scientists, they didn't think it was ghosts. They decided to start looking around and measuring things. Ultimately, what they discovered was that an exhaust fan in the room was producing a frequency, a sinusoidal frequency, of 18.98 hertz. And they say that that's the exact frequency at which the human eyeball starts resonating, i.e., a strong vibration at that frequency could actually make your eyeballs vibrate slightly and perhaps lead to the hallucinations. That's one theory. There's several theories. But it has certainly been shown through other studies that infrasonic waves can affect perception, can make you feel like you're being watched, make the hair stand up on the back of your neck. You just never know. <laughs> There's some theories that these sounds are perceived by us in such a way because they're a warning mechanism that perhaps uh, earthquakes, volcanoes, avalanches, certain predators like tigers have been shown to produce infrasound. These events can produce these low frequency sounds and maybe it's a, an involved hardwired response to feel fear or tension or suspense or foreboding when you experience these sounds. As part of this test, for me and this video, you've been experiencing 18.98 hertz over the duration of this video. I wanted to be certain that YouTube would reproduce the sound. So earlier, I uploaded a short experimental video. Here I am down at my bench. I've got the oscilloscope on and I hit play on the video and I come back to the oscilloscope and you can see there's the wave faithfully reproduced. So YouTube does indeed play back videos with these low frequencies below 20 hertz. So these frequencies have been playing now for the duration of this video. Have you felt anything? Have you seen anything? Maybe out of the corner of your eyes? I know during my experiments with this I had the sound playing for a while and I certainly felt tension. I didn't hallucinate but Perhaps you will. Um, so that's it. That's just my, uh, my little experiment for tonight. I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, I'm going to leave on the remainder of this video about five minutes of 18.98 hertz if you want to do your own experimentation. So as soon as the video cuts, it'll keep playing for five minutes and the sub-audible tone will be there. I think that those of you with subwoofers have probably already noticed it. <laughs> or maybe. Who knows? We're not supposed to be able to hear below 20 hertz, but uh, I could hear it or sense it. So, anyway, enjoy. Thanks for watching.